Good morning, everybody. This is Pastor Jim here. I am a senior pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church. It's time for our daily devotion today. I well, apologize. I'm a couple of minutes tardy getting online. I usually try to start a couple of minutes before our devotional time, but uh, here now and just going to take a couple of minutes and wait for folks to join us before uh, we get on with our devotion today. I'm glad all of you are here, though, that are going to be joining us. Kind of a nice Monday. <clears throat> Wonderful time for us just to find a few moments settled in together. Hi, Garth. Hi, Cherry. Hi, Linda. Good morning to all of you. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Chris. Hi, Susan. Good morning to you. Hi, Stacy. Good morning to you as well. Hi, Barbara. Good morning to you. Hi, Diane. Good morning. Several of you already have joined in. Glad to have you this morning. Good morning, Shirley. Glad you're here as well. We'll just take another couple of minutes. I want to make sure everybody has a chance to join that's going to be, uh, that wants to join us for our live. Um, portion of this, and then certainly know that others will join later on. <clears throat> I think I just swallowed a bug, <laughs> or it certainly felt like it all of a sudden. Not sure what that was all about. <clears throat> but uh, For those of you who are here already, Luke chapter 7 is where we're going to be reading from, so if you want to find uh, your Bible, in the Gospel of Luke, we're going to be reading uh, verses 11 to 16 out of chapter 7. I feel like I have something caught right in the back of my throat. It's going to take my voice away at just about any time. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I was wondering if anybody wants to type in the comments if they know what week number this is that we are on. <laughs> it seems like uh, seems like forever that we have been doing uh, some of this uh, social distancing stuff and everything. Can't wait to see people. <clears throat> so um, we're going to be reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 7, verses 11 to 16. So if you want to join me there real quick. And it says, A little later, Jesus went to a city called Nain. His disciples and a great crowd traveled with him. As he approached the city gate, a dead man was being carried out. He was his mother's only son, and she was a widow. A large crowd from the city was with her. When he saw her, the Lord had compassion for her and said, Don't cry. He stepped forward and touched the stretcher on which the dead man was being carried. Those carrying him stood still. Jesus said, Young man, I say to you, get up. The dead man sat up and began to speak, and Jesus gave him to his mother. Awestruck, everyone praised God. A great prophet has appeared among us, they said. God has come to help his people. This news about Jesus spread throughout Judea and the surrounding region. Our uh, author today is uh, Francis Jorge Valera from the, the Dominican Republic. Uh, focus verse was 2 um, Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 13. As for you, brothers and sisters, never tire of doing what is good. And he writes, Every so often a certain young man would arrive at my workplace to ask for money or for other assistance. Sometimes I willingly gave him money. Other times I did so grudgingly because though he always insisted he was going to change his ways, he never did. His addiction had destroyed his health. The last time I saw him and gave him money, his health had deteriorated greatly. 
but I was caught by surprise when he raised his arm toward heaven and said a prayer of thanks to God for my life and what I had done for him. A year went by without my seeing him. And one day a woman whom I did not know came to my place of work. She was the young man's mother and she had come to bring me a message. Her son had told her on his deathbed to seek me out and thank me for all that I had done for him. The Apostle Paul's message is a clear reminder for me to never tire of doing what is good. And our reading from Luke about the widow of Nain is, about, is but one example of Jesus' compassion. Today, when, cyn when cynicism toward the suffering of others is so prevalent, Jesus calls us to show compassion, period. And the thought for the day is God's radical grace calls me to give and expect nothing in return. Uh, I was <clears throat> kind of thinking about that, uh, you know, particularly for those of us that are um, responsible for a benevolent fund at our churches, if we have one, um, you know, and, and the judgment that has to go into who do you help and how often and, uh, uh, you know, what circumstances and, and all of this. Um, we, we decided several years ago to not do individualized help. Um, just simply because um, it seems to be um, something that when one person um, receives help, they tell all of their friends, and before you know it, within about a month's period of time, whatever money you have that's in the benevolent fund is gone. Um, and so you don't, you know, you can help people for a short temporary period of time. And even though you tell people, um, and, you know, what our policy was is to only help them once during that year's period of time, you'd have people come back and they'd have a, a different kind of request, but it would still be some kind of monetary request or something like that. And so we've just, we've gotten to the point where we point them towards other agencies within the city that can give them assistance in specific ways. And, and maybe part of that is cynicism. You know, I'm, I'm, I, I'll be honest with you. I think in some ways it is difficult to be able to measure um, if you are doing good for someone, if you're really truly helping them out or if you're just enabling and hurting. I'm not going to argue with, uh, you know, with Mr. Valera's um, idea on how he wanted to help. I think what we need to each one of us do is determine what we are comfortable with when it comes to compassion ministry and then engage in it and be consistent at that. Um, that Jesus, yes, does call us to be compassionate, that we are to work for the poor and the oppressed, that we are supposed to do whatever we can to, hate, to help those who are the downtrodden. We have great compassion ministries that go on at St. John's. Neighbor to Neighbor is a compassion ministry. Baby Grace is a compassion ministry. Um, many other things are, are compassion ministries that we are doing um, to try to serve the poor and the needy around us in ways in which we know will do good for them um, and in ways in which for many of us we feel comfortable sponsoring because we know um, exactly the out we know pretty much the outcome of those kinds of things so I, but I want to remind you is, is that you know Jesus does call us to show compassion I agree with that, you know, and, and each one of us should figure out for ourselves the way in which compassion ministry can be lived out in your daily life. What would that look like for you? Is there someone in particular maybe that you you see routinely that um, you know is, is homeless or destitute or something like that? Is there a way for for you to maybe engage that person in a meaningful way? Maybe you just sit down with them at, at a Chipotle or something like that, six feet apart, and you buy them a meal in that moment, and that's compassion ministry. We've talked about it before, you know, having the small plastic bags that are in your car that are already prepared with some items that you could give to people that you see on street corners and things like that because – you maybe don't want to give them money, but you'd rather give them something tangible and that you know would be beneficial to them. Um, you know, all these kinds of things. What are we going to do 
to to prepare and then carry out our our compassion ministry uh, in a way that will make a difference in the world around us. Uh, it's one thing to talk about being compassionate. It's one way to say, you know, it's one thing to say, you know, I have compassion for people who. But in this example, you know, there is there is a living um, example of it. It was one thing for Jesus to be able to look upon the circumstances of the widow of Nain and see that she is crying and she is destitute because she's a widow. Her only son has died. And now she has no financial support. It's one thing for him to say to her, don't cry. It was something else for Jesus to do something about it. To be able to touch her son who lies upon the stretcher and say, young man, I say to you, get up. And the young man is raised from the dead. So when we think about compassion, we need to think about compassion as action. And so I would challenge all of us to really think about what it means for you to be compassionate and how that is lived out each and every day um, for you and your life. Let's take a moment <clears throat> to pause and to pray. So God of grace, we ask that you help us to show compassion to our brothers and our sisters, even those who we know um, may not deserve it or who we think don't deserve it. You have shown us great compassion. You have reached out to each one of us. Help us to break past some of our cynicism and find a meaningful way in which we can express tangible compassion in the world around us. And we pray this in the name of the one who has shown compassion to each of us. Amen. Thanks everybody for being here today. I will look forward to visiting with you Tomorrow, as we continue on our journey of somewhere around, I think uh, Linda has said that we've done this for 16 weeks. Shirley thinks maybe 11 or so, but Linda's keeping track. You know, somewhere around uh, whatever that is, you know, we're just going to keep pressing on as long as, as we need to. Um, but I, I hope that you will um, come and join us again tomorrow. Uh, sorry, I wanted, wanted to just make one comment real quick. Sorry about the technical difficulties um, with sound yesterday. I am, I am not sure what happened. Uh, Allie and I scrambled quickly to try to figure that out, but had no, no technical knowledge regarding that. So um, I've called the progressive folks, and they're going to have a certain, they have a service call team that's going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, that's going to come out. And they're going to look at it and figure out why all of a sudden we have no sound out of our sound system. So, uh, there's my cynicism right there. <laughs> this may never get fixed. But um, we're going to post the video on YouTube. And, and so Jessica's going to put that up. If you did not get a chance to see and, and participate in worship yesterday, you'll be able to. She's going to send it out as an email link. And if you do take an opportunity to watch the worship service and you did not sign in, um, yesterday, would you please sign in, let us know, so that we can capture your attendance for that. We'd appreciate it. Um, otherwise, I'll look forward to seeing you all tomorrow at this time. I hope that you have a blessed and wonderful rest of your Monday. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.